Good morning, folks. A beautiful day here. A little overcast, but that's all right. Here's our piggies eating at the hay feeder. Some of the cows just loitering around after morning chores. They uh, tend to hang out by the water fountain for a little bit before they head back to the field to eat hay. So, just thought I would take a little moment and talk about horns. Here's a little jersey. I uh, went to the local auction, which is uh, not routine for us. But these cows will all be drying off in March. And uh, oh, I do need a little milk for the house. And uh, it'd be nice to keep some milk in the pig's diet. Uh, although they will survive if uh, we don't feed them milk for a few weeks. But uh, I did think to myself if I saw a deal on an animal that I could possibly flip in the future and make some money on or even just keep, um, then it would be worthwhile for me to buy her and then still have milk year round. So I uh, went to the sale and uh, there was a lot of dairy animals there being sold. And I think the big blizzard that was coming through had something to do with that. Guys that were milking extra cows to fill incentive days on their quota were probably uh, thinking, well, let's clean up a little bit extra before the holidays, before the bad weather hits. And, uh, you know, feed's starting to run out in this part of the world. So uh, they said there's twice as many dairy animals at the sale than there would normally be. <coughs> oh boy, excuse me. Anyway, um, there is more animals than usual, but dairy animals have been selling extremely high these last few months because the dairy farmers here in Ontario have been given incentive days on their quota to fill. So, I mean, uh, three days a month, that's like an extra 10% they're allowed to ship right now. So they've been buying up cows. So cows have been going really high, so I didn't expect to find anything. Then I found this girl crammed into a pen of jerseys uh, getting very close to calving and no information on her other than the fact that she's over eight months bred, which I could visibly see that. But I looked at those horns on her and I thought, well, now there's a deal. Somebody's going to get a perfectly good jersey for dirt cheap. And I thought, hey, why not let that be me? So I sat around and I bought her at a very reasonable price and brought her home. Now, I guess this is where people change. An old version of me would have looked at that heifer and thought, hey, I can cut the horns off her and she'll be worth three times as much because no dairy farmer wants the horns on her. And an old version of me would have done just that. I would have bought her, brought her home after she calved and had the stress of calving over with. I would have removed those and uh, would have been able to resell her for substantially more money. Oh yeah, good shot at those. And I'm quite good at dehorning. I um, learned how to dehorn as a teenager, learned how to dehorn goats and cattle, and typically would just be disbutting them. But every now and then you'd buy a cow or a neighbor would phone me that forgot to dehorn or didn't get around to it and I'd go over and help them. And I got really good at uh, removing these big horns. And uh, then later I worked for a semen company and uh, Ended up, uh, every now and then a bull would come in with big horns on it and quite valuable ones at that. And uh, I would be the one to dehorn them. So, I mean, I've dehorned animals worth over a quarter million dollars. But as a child, it always seemed wrong to me uh, to remove horns. And I guess sometimes children are right because they haven't been corrupted. And I remember well the day I bought four lineback heifers. One of them was my old Stella cow, one of the originals, and uh, they all had horns. Actually, here's Stella over here. And they were bred yearlings, and the vet was in doing his annual stuff on my father's animals, and uh, the vet said, those are nice heifers, let's cut those horns off. And I said, no, I uh, don't want to. And he said, why? 
He said they're dangerous, they've got to come off, and he just went ahead and dehorned them. Which was my first glimpse at medical tyranny, but we won't discuss that on this page. So, um, ever since then, it was just drilled in my head, you'd dehorn everything. And like I say, I got really good at it. And then when I moved here, my wife said, nope, no more dehorning. And uh, it wasn't hard for her to convince me on that because deep down I knew she was right. Yet, I still figured she was wrong. So we uh, stopped dehorning and then sure enough, last summer, first of our two-year-olds calved out and they had horns on them and I'd bring them into the barn to milk them and I kept saying, one of these days I'm going to lose an eye or get hurt by a horn. Not because they're being mean, but just because they're tossing their head at a fly or they pull their head out of the stall real fast. And I thought, yeah, this is it. I'm going to have to start dehorning. But I thought about it. We never dehorned in the past. Prior to the 50s, horns were just an accepted way of life. Uh, how did we deal with it? And I realized up until then, cattle were raised outside or in tie stall barns that were uh, typically stanchion stalls, either made out of steel or wood. The cow wasn't able to turn her head freely and accidentally catch you with a horn or gouge the cow standing next to her. So I realized as we made stalls more comfortable and gave cows more freedom or started loose housing them, but still kept them contained in a barn, that they had the ability to horn one another and hurt each other. So that's when we started dehorning. So instead of changing our methods, we decided to change the cow. So <clears throat> I realized if I wasn't going to dehorn anymore, I had to change my methods and not change the cow. So I redesigned my milking parlor to make it more like the old head stanchions. And because they are not, look at those pretty horns. Because they're not standing in there 24 seven, I don't mind. They're only in there for a few minutes to be milked. So they don't need that freedom of movement. So they don't hurt me and they don't hurt the cow next to them. And then I don't have holding pens anymore. And the cows actually just stand out here in the yard before milking and they come in when they're ready to be milked and they come back out to the other yard. So I don't cram them into a holding pen. That was the other thing I had to learn. And then as far as the chute and the head gate to catch them, well, it's now just a two person job. You just need somebody there to close the chute when the cow comes in, but that's all right. Anything we do in the head gate is typically a two person job anyway. So, so um, I've changed my views on dehorning and that was partly the reason why I bought that heifer the other day. She was a good, a good deal. But more importantly, I just knew whoever bought her was gonna chop those horns off and I just felt bad for her. Isn't she pretty? So, I've changed my point of view on horns and cutting them off. I'm not going to sit there and badmouth the people that do. We'll all eventually learn. The dairy industry is learning that and they're breeding more and more of pulled genetics. There's a pulled heifer there. This breed was originally half pulled, but I'm actually switching it my herd all over to horned genetics because they seem to be the better cow and eventually all these older cows will retire and as the herd becomes all horned they need to all be able to deal with one another so it'll be more of an even playing field when everything has horns but in order for me to switch my mindset uh, on horns I had to first admit that I was wrong I was wrong to be dehorning them in the first place. Which I think is why it's so hard to see change in agriculture. In order to make change, we have to first admit that what we were doing was wrong. And that's why we were changing it. And we hate admitting that we were wrong. 
which is why typically things take a full generation to change. It's easier for us to say our parents were wrong and that's why we do it differently than it does for us to make the change and say we were doing it wrong and we had to do something different. Anyway, that's just my thoughts on dehorning. Um, my thoughts on change. Changed my way of thinking a lot the last few years. Uh, not afraid to say that a lot of what I was doing was wrong. A lot of what I'm still doing is wrong. I don't think that makes me a bad person. I just think it means that, well, we're all just a little naive. And slowly we can figure things out and change.